Hey everybody, it's Ann Beebe. Today is Wednesday, May 29th, 2019. I'm Barb Hammer. Um, so today I want to do a follow-up to my last video, which was about this uh, scandal in Canada. And it has a U.S. connection. So it uh, involves this um, engineering and construction firm called SNC Lavalin. It's a very big company, maybe the biggest company in Canada, and they uh, get a lot of contracts around the world too. And so there's the scandal involves the government of um, Justin uh, Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister, who's the, also the head of the Liberal Party. And so a couple of his cabinet ministers uh, resigned over this and uh, then they were kicked out of the party and they've announced that they're running as independents in the fall election, but that's neither here nor there. One of them is indigenous, they're both women. So there's been a lot of identity politics thrown in with this whole thing. Um, but people are missing what's really behind this whole thing. And I've tried to get through this through to Canadians and I even had an interaction with a Canadian lady on Twitter and she just does not get this and she's on the left. So this is the problem, even on the left. I mean, the left in some ways is worse in Canada than in the U S and it's even more fake and they just act more like the right to me. I don't know. Um, so yeah, so my video, I knew there's something wrong with this whole scandal because it involves um, the government of Muammar Gaddafi, uh, who was ousted from Libya. And so SNC-Lavalin was doing business with Gaddafi's government for decades, really. So um, it's kind of strange. This company does not have a good reputation in Canada. And... Um, I'm not going to say that it's clean or that there isn't any corruption. It's just weird that they're going after this company over its involvement in Libya. And so I was trying to argue that this is about regime change and trying to smear, continue to smear uh, Muammar Gaddafi and smear anyone connected or anyone who had any, did any, um, had any dealings with Gaddafi's government. So um, this evening, I was listening to CBC Radio, this Canadian broadcasting. I'm an American in Canada with dual citizenship. And uh, I hate listening to CBC Radio. So there's this evening news program called As It Happens. And I think they, they are broadcast on a lot of stations, uh, national public radio stations as well. But CBC is just corporate propaganda, really. So it's supposedly a public broadcaster, but it's been neoliberalized and it serves the interests of like the fossil fuel industry and the intelligence community. And they spread a lot of propaganda. So they were interviewing um, a CBC reporter and they said that he had broken this story about SNC-Lavalin and its involvement in Libya. And so it was this broadcast. And so it, here they're talking about the SNC trial. It's really tiny print. So I got the name. I listened carefully. I didn't hear his name at the beginning. And I, I'm relieved they always will report the name of the reporter or, or who they're interviewing at the end. So I listened carefully. And his name is Dave Seglins. And this is the man. So he works in CBC Investigations. And he reports, he's an investigative journalist. And he reports on government surveillance, among other things. Uh, a range of domestic and international issues. And government and corporate corruption, yeah. So... Dave Seglins also has a secure drop. And I was thinking, hmm, that's interesting. Who else has a secure drop? WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks, and a lot of people have a hard time believing this, is a CIA honeypot. 
and Julian Assange is an intelligence asset and Honey Putt himself. Um, I'm not going to get into that, but anyway, it's just a fact. And <laughs> all you have to do is do your research and you're going to see that's what's going on. Uh, who else has a secure job? Ah, the intercept. Now who, uh, who's behind the intercept? So anyway, uh, there's a billionaire named Pierre Omidyar and he has connections to the CIA and he gave, gave Glenn Greenwald money to start the intercept, uh, Glenn Greenwald and some other reporters, Laura Poitras and Jeremy Scahill, I believe. And I don't know if there are anybody else. Uh, they have a secure drop and they are also a honey drop and these honey, hun, hun, sorry, honey pots. So they have secure, secure drops, honey pots, lure whistleblowers. And, uh, then those whistleblowers, uh, often get burned or whatever. Uh, so that's Dave and I looked at his Twitter page. So this is his Twitter page and, uh, yeah, so there's the link to secure drop and yeah, so he works out of Toronto and yeah, so here he has pinned. Here's how to reach us anonymously. CBC rolls out encrypted technology to protect whistleblowers. Yeah, protect whistleblowers. Good for you, Dave. So uh, when I saw that, I knew uh, there's definitely something suspicious with this whole um, SNC Lavalin scandal. So I've decided this day segments, he's an intelligence asset, just like Julian Assange, just like Edward Snowden was. So the intercept was, got started, um, by releasing, uh, the Edward Snowden leaks. Um, so I decided to look a little bit more into Dave Seglin's background. So I went to his, um, LinkedIn page. So I have an account, which I don't really use. I just use it just to look at other people's LinkedIn profiles. So, um, here he says it was both a privilege and an intriguing journey to work on the paradise papers offshore tax haven leak. Uh, it involved 13.4 million leaked records scoured through by hundreds of journalists with the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, including Toronto Star, Radio Canada. That's the uh, CBC's French uh, outlet is called Radio Canada. Uh, BBC and The Guardian. So all mainstream media outlets. Uh, okay. So, uh, he was involved in the Pentagon papers and I mean, not pan, sorry, Panama papers. Sorry. Uh, so this is, uh, scrolling down on his LinkedIn page. Uh, yeah. So Pentagon, there he goes. Pentagon papers, paradise papers. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm a senior investigative journalist with CBC news based in Toronto. I've worked across Canada and now focus on projects with CBC's I unit fifth estate national news on a wide range of stories from rail safety to corporate corruption, the Pentagon papers, uh, Panama papers, sorry, paradise papers, police accountability, workplace harassment, state surveillance, and Canada's Snowden files in collaboration with the intercept. Okay. So he's worked with the intercept. So he has a secure drop just like the intercept and he's worked with, uh, another intelligence, um, asset honeypot, the intercept. Okay. So this has gotten very interesting. Okay. So he's worked, he, this guy has got to be an intelligence asset. So CBC, you know, they spread a lot of propaganda. So this is no surprise that this guy works in CBC investigations and he's broken the, broken the story about SNC-Lavalin and the Qaddafi government. Um, 
so let's look at uh so these are a couple of the stories involving snc lowland uh and yeah so they claim that um the accusations are that the company bribed uh the Qaddafis for contracts and that they supposedly defrauded the Libyan Libyan government, Libyan people in the process. That's the story. But how much can you believe of all this when it's about the Qaddafi government and so many lies are spread about the Qaddafi government itself? Um, so here's a picture of one of Qaddafi's sons with an executive from that company. And yeah, so there's all kinds of stories about what they, there's, a, there was a story I saw where they supposedly paid for prostitutes for Gaddafi's sons. So that's sort of a classic smear about the Gaddafi's, you know, involving rape or sexual impropriety or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and parties and things. So anyway, and yeah, living living the life, you know. Here they pay allegedly pay, paid for this yacht, you know. Anyway, that's the story. Improper payments. Yeah. Oh yeah. So um, there is also. Yeah. So this is all about the. Uh, Yeah, so the Qaddafi government was facing sanctions and I don't know. But the U.S. and the West, uh, that was all a regime change operation to get Qaddafi out. You know, they didn't like Qaddafi. And there's another story here. Yeah, so that apparently, I don't know, the story is they've been trying to go after SNC Lavalin and they, none of the charges against this company have stuck. So they're determined to get, I don't know, that's a story, but it's just strange that this is um, why they're going after this company. And the projects that we're working on were good projects, at least, uh, you know, you know, these we're going to help the Libyan people. There was a waterworks project to bring water from aquifers under the Sahara. Yeah. So the company, yeah, they say it, it's like a spy novel. Uh, So they supposedly were trying to get uh, Qaddafi's, uh, one of Qaddafi's sons out and into hiding. And uh, the company has denied any wrongdoing. And uh, they said they said that if there were any bribes or anything like that, it was uh, some rogue employees that don't work for the company anymore. Um, so anyway, this Dave Seglins, he's connected to the Panama Papers, and I did a little, um, so if you're not familiar with the Panama Papers, um, it, it was a limited hangout leak. So uh, they spread some, they spread a little truth. What they do is they spread a little bit of truth with a lot of lies. And so the Pentagon Papers were intended to smear um, uh, people that the U.S. didn't like. Um, so it was, uh, you know, it started with Putin, you know, they went after Putin, they spread lies about Putin and Assad and the Panama Papers. I'm sorry if I'm saying Pentagon Papers, I mean to say Panama. So yeah, here's, so there's a number of articles I found on Global Research, which has some good articles. Um, so the Panama Papers, uh, um, spread suspicion and they yeah they smeared people the u.s dislikes so that was the point of the panama papers um yeah so there's a lot of global research yeah fabricated putin leak link to 
leaked Panama Papers. Yeah. Panama Papers and regime change. Okay. Oh, yeah. So the Panama Papers, the who was behind the Panama Papers? Okay. So this was another <sighs> intelligence <laughs> operation psyop, I guess. So uh, the Panama Papers. Um, okay. So here it says, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists is based, so that they, they are the organization organization behind the Panama Papers. And uh, based right, it's based in Washington, D.C. It's an offshoot of Center for Public Integrity. Um, and Christiane Amapour of CNN, who used to be with CNN, I don't think she is anymore, I'm not sure, uh, was a former board member. And it's funded by a CIA connected Ford Foundation, George Soros's Open Society Foundation, Rockefeller Family Fund, and, and the Rockefeller Brothers Fund of the International Banking Cartel. Right, okay. And uh, so mainstream media outlets were publishing the Panama Papers. So Huffington Post, The Guardian, BBC. Uh, Anyway, uh, so actually I went to Scott Creighton's Nomadic Everyman site and I, I knew there would probably be something about the Panama Papers there. So yeah, he had uh, an article that was originally in Mint Press News. And um, yeah, so it mentions this International Consortium of Investigative Journalism. And that's connected to Piero Midyar. Once again, Piero Midyar. Uh, yeah, so he threw money at the new uh, a nonprofit called the new called New Knowledge. It's a data firm that uh, waged one of the most devious disinformation campaigns in any recent American election, and he is a key backer um the international consortium of investigative journalism the outfit that holds the Pan panama papers and oversees the strategic dissemination of that leaked trove of financial files to the handpicked journalists yeah uh yeah and what else here so what else did i find here ah so when i went to mint press news and did a search so it seems that um, Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, they were promoting the Panama Papers and that's kind of suspicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're kind of pushing this side up, you know, so I've noticed that, you know, like Edward Snowden and Julian Assange will support each other. And so, you know, all these intelligence assets and psyops, they support each other. Anyway, what else do I have here? Uh, yeah, this is a fake left article. So this is a um, hidden key to the SNC Lavalin scandal. So this is the article that really is smearing the Qaddafi government. Uh, yeah, Libyan dictator. Libyan dictator Muammar Qaddafi's brutal regime. SNC Lavalin, a Canadian corporate giant with an established history of corruption, is charged with bribing the Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi's brutal regime. Yeah. And. Yeah, here we go. So Canadians can see how the world's bloodiest tyrants are cosseted, indulged and enabled. bribed a bloody despots regime, regime, not government in exchange for billions in contracts. Yeah. So this is, so this is what everybody is just sort of accepting without questioning is this whole story about SNC Lavalin and Qaddafi's government. So, um, yeah. So I just was looking up different things here. Da da da. Anyway, so to sum up, this is definitely um, 
a psyop. This is propaganda. This whole SNC Lavalin scandal is um they're trying to they're this is part of the regime change operation. This is in connection with the regime change operation against Muammar Gaddafi's government and the smears, the continuing smearing of Gaddafi in the media. And um, this trial is to punish this Canadian company because they did business with Gaddafi's government for decades and they want to damage this company, maybe put it out of business. And uh, so I think uh, the this company is looking at possibly being banned. If it can't get a plea bargain with the um, Trudeau government or with the judicial system in Canada, they're facing, I think, like a 10 year ban on Canadian government contracts. And uh, it is like a major player in construction in Canada. And uh, it's going to be badly hurt by that. And actually, I think they have problems with trying to find companies that can handle huge construction projects because this is the biggest SNC Lavalin is the biggest company in Canada. Um, so anyway, Dave Seglins, Dave Seglins is an intelligence asset, I'm convinced. So he's probably working with, I'm guessing with, uh, so in Canada, there's a, so the CIA equivalent would be, uh, CSIS. Um, and then the Canadian equivalent of the FBI is the RCMP and the RCMP are the ones who have laid these charges. So I'm convinced that Dave Seglins is working with CSIS and or um, the RCMP to push this, uh, these charges you know, by breaking the story. Anyway, that's what I found. Um, thanks for your patience. I know it got kind of involved, but um, I really wanted to get this out because uh, people in Canada, Canada are just not getting this. Sadly, they're just they're just uh, accepting this story as as is, and they are not questioning. Even people who are anti-war and anti-regime change, even people who think they're progressive, claim to be progressive, they're accepting this story as is. Anyway, that's uh, that's it for now. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your patience. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.